So here's the problem, let's move on to the solution. So we're being told to find the potential inside and outside of a uniformly charged sphere. And the way to do that is to use this formula. So the formula for potential at the point r, so r is a vector, it's going to be the negative of the integral from some reference point all the way to the point we're evaluating the integral of the line integral of the electric field. So using this formula for any given electric field, we can always find the potential. And so for our case, I've written the electric field over here. So there are two cases. So for this is inside the sphere, this is outside of the sphere, you can have different electric fields. So I'm not going to prove how you arrive at these expressions. You can use Gauss law to derive these fairly quickly. So I'll just assume you know these at this point. So let's move on to finding the potentials. So let's consider the first case where we want to find the potential outside of the sphere. So where the position is larger than the radius. So using our formula dot dl, so electric field. The electric field is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon q over r squared times the r vector. And so because of this, this dl is going to have uh, several components. There's going to be a dr, d theta, d phi, because we're using uh, spherical coordinates. So you see that this is only dependent on r. So we can get rid of the later, uh, the theta and the phi terms. And we can essentially just keep the r terms. So you're going to arrive at an expression like this, dr. So the, for the theta and the phi terms, we can get rid of them all, because they're all going to be equal to 0. Because this is just, this just has an r term. So this integral is going to go from infinity, because we always use infinity as our uh, reference point, all the way to r. So integrating this, this should be fairly easy. So we have a negative 1 over r, infinity to r. So we have a negative 1 over r minus 0, because 1 over infinity is always equal to 0. And so quite obviously, we arrive at something like this. Now this answer is pretty much expected, right? Because uh, we can treat the sphere as a, as a point charge. So this is the potential for a point charge. So it's the same if you're considering the potential outside of the sphere. So let's move on to the more interesting case where you're inside the sphere. So again, we use the same formula. So from some reference point all the way to R, the line interval. So in this case, the electric field is going to change halfway. So again, we're going to move from infinity, and then we're going to stop at R, because once we reach R, the electric field is going to change. Well, we know that from infinity to the capital R, the radius of the sphere, the electric field is going to be equal to this. And then moving on, once we go inside of the sphere, from R to the this small R here, the electric field is going to change into something like this. Times R dr. So we're gonna so that we're gonna have to break up the integral. So to solve this, this is I'll just pull out the constant here. You have a q, you have infinity to r whatever r squared dr. Here we have slightly more constants. Q r to the power of third. So you see that the integrals are just fairly easy, so let's just integrate these expressions. So again, this is negative 1 over r from infinity to capital R. So we're going to just be left with negative 1 over capital R. And for this, it's going to be r squared over 2 from capital R to the smaller r. And of course, we're just going to be left with this over here. And so essentially, we're done. So we're just going to clean this expression up a little bit. So let me just pull out q over 4 pi epsilon. So here we have 1 over r. And then for the right-hand side, we have, so we've pulled out q over 4 pi epsilon. So we have negative 1 over r to the power of 3rd, r squared over 2 minus 
capital R square over 2. And to further clean this up, so R squared divided by 2 capital R to the power of 3rd, and then plus 1 over 2R. And then continuing. So I'm not just I'm not going to copy where our left off. So just we're going to combine these two terms. So there's going to be there's one over r plus one half of one over r. So we're going to end up with three over two r. And the other expression is minus r squared two r to the power of third. And now we're going to pull out two r from the expression inside the bracket. So I'm just trying to make this look nice. So here we're going to be left with a 3. And then here we get an R squared divided by R, capital R squared. So there we have it. So I think this is neat enough. So to conclude, we've found the potential of both cases when it's outside of the sphere. The potential is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon uh, Q over R. For the second case, when R is inside of the sphere, we're going to have this expression here. So I'm just going to copy it once. So the fun thing to do now is to try to graph what this potential looks like to see how it changes. So let's do just that. So uh, these two expressions here, so you can consider this the final answer. So this is the potential. So graphing this, so this is going to be R, this is going to be the potential. So if, when we're, uh, I'm going to mark this point as the capital R. So let's just start with the right hand side. So when R exceeds capital R, we're going to get something that's uh, proportional to 1 over R. So you know that anything that's proportional to 1 over R is going to just slope down like this. That's going to get closer and closer to the R axis. And then before that, over here on the left hand side, you see something that's kind of quadratic. And you see there's a negative sign in front of the r squared. So you know that with a negative, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be a parabola. So essentially, we can, we know that we're going to have something like this. So if, at first, we're going to have a parabola that slopes downwards. And at this point, it's going to suddenly change into some function that's proportional to 1 over r. So there you have it. This is what the graph is going to look like. So uh, another point to note is that uh, in this problem we're told to find the potential. Here we've used the electric field to find the potential. Later on in the book you'll find a different problem that tells you to find the potential with the charge density. So there are two different methods to solve this problem actually. So this is all for this video. I'll see you again next time.